Right, well that I think is a rather complicated question because there have been so many foundations. There has been the early Christianity, there's been a change to Protestantism, there's been the birth of liberal secular democracy and of um, secularism. And um, So we, we've gone through so many. I, I don't see Western civilization as a progressive whole. And when I'm looking at what is good that has come out out of it, then I, I'm looking at the modern period, at the age of science, at the Enlightenment, and at the birth of, of liberalism. So those foundations, I would say that is what we want to preserve. That's what I want to preserve. I'm not entirely sure that there's any f that are completely distinctive. What I, what I want to preserve of um, it is, is the modern, it's what, what we've come into in the modern period, when we've had the rise of science, we've had the enlightenment, and we've had the rise of liberalism. Though those are the distinctive um, elements of a liberal secular democracy, which is really quite new to humans and which has, has served us so well. I, th I think we're seeing um, some disparagement of um, modernism from the, the postmodernists and what I would call the pre-modernists. So we have these developments, all Western, where we have the pre-modernists who would like to take us back to a time before science, before liberalism, before secularism, and uh, much more interested in a, um, a religious uh, conception of society. And then we have the postmodernists who see the whole modern period as a time of um, patriarchy and white supremacy and imperialism. And they'd like us to uh, get rid of all the, the science and, and reason and developments of that time as well and move into a, a new time of, of multiple plural knowledges, which is um, not, not somewhere I, I really think we want to go. I think, again, that, that would depend what precisely they were dismissive of. At the moment, the kind of young person that I'm um, dealing with is one who has a very simplistic idea of, um, of, modern, of the modern West as an imperialist, white supremacist, patriarchal um, state. So I would point out to that young person that um, these ideas have developed. It is here that we have the greatest um, equality, freedom and opportunity that has ever been seen by anybody, which gives her or him the ability to question and challenge in the first place. So I would encourage them to say, yes, certainly do that, but don't uh, fail to appreciate how you are able to do that. I think it's important to, to study history generally and particularly strong within um, the Western tradition. Our, our science um, is um, our, our canon of literature, certainly. There are aspects of um, the Western tradition that we don't really um, value. Don't, I don't value very much. It's not something that I, I would like us to carry on, but we should still study it. The history of, um, of religion in the West has, has not been a good one. And, but it, I think it is still important to look back at that and to look at the times before we separated church and state and to learn from that. And also if we're talking in terms of Western philosophy, then we're looking at um, the counter-enlightenment ideas and the uh, postmodern ideas, which are, are very specifically centred in the West. As you all know, I am not a fan of postmodernism, and that is a uh, Western tradition. I, I would like to die now. <laughs> I think that we're seeing on the left um, an increasing popularised version of postmodernism, which um, undervalues science, undervalues expertise. It's more interested in uh, lived experience and group identity and knowledges that are seen to come from um, identity groups. And then, of course, we are seeing at the same time on the right uh, the rise of, of populism and nationalism, a kind of anti-expertise and anti-intellectual current, which is critical of um, the scholarship generally, including um, that which has um, 
has been produced by the Western canon. So I think we need to be very aware of both of these anti-intellectual, anti-reality uh, movements and to stand behind and defend the fruits of, the, of modernity. I, I think we can look back and we can see two main things. We can see how strong uh, women have been. When we look back at history and we see that, that women weren't allowed to own property, they weren't allowed to speak in church, they had to obey their husbands, we're looking at a legitimate patriarchy. So the first thing we can be very glad about is that we have come out of that state, that women have equal rights and equal opportunities. But another thing we can look at when we look back is that we are not going to see that women are some kind of agency-less, powerless uh, being. Women have always taken their role in society, they have always taken a part in shaping and forming uh, the community and adding to knowledge and so I find, I, f I find the kind of scholarship looking at gender which neglects this, which wants to say that everything has always been terrible uh, for women and women haven't had a voice, I'd like them to look back at that a bit more realistically and see how much of society has been shaped by women. The best, the, the book that I would recommend absolutely everybody to read is Jonathan Rausch's Kindly Inquisitors. And that was published 25 years ago, but and he, in it he looks at the rising threats to freedom of speech. And he looks at the egalitarian principle in which we want to, to value all knowledges, we want to be fair. And he contrasts this and some other um, approaches to the liberal principle and the liberal principle is not kind it is not fair we're not giving equal credit to absolutely everything this is the way in which we examine ideas ideas do battle with each other and the best ones win out and so he sets out a couple of um, a couple of rules which, which are that nobody gets the final say and everybody must be able to challenge everything and he argues for this as a kind of liberal science which moves society forwards. And this is something that I think we all tend to know. We, we, have, we have these principles, but we have not had to defend them for so long. People have lost, lost the art of defending freedom of speech and, and, and liberalism. And so I think I, I would really recommend everybody to read Kindly Inquisitors and to get this clear in their mind what they are standing up for and why.